Their Z-10 is a modern battlefield attack helicopter of the People's Republic of China Army. It is intended to directly counter the threat as posed by enemy armor in a number of scenarios utilizing advanced technologies and guided munitions as well as indigenous armament types. The helicopter is produced by Cheng Aircraft Industries Corporation of China and, in March of 2013, it was revealed that the Chinese had considerable assistance from the Russian Kamov helicopter firm in developing the base Z-10 model. Their Z-10 stands as the first indigenous Chinese attack helicopter design of note. Their Z-10 is a departure for the Chinese who, until this time, were relying heavily on modified transport types to shore up their anti-armor limitations. This spurred development of both an in-house attack helicopter solution and an indigenous anti-armor missile system. Design work actually began as early as 1979 and modern conflicts only hurried the requirement along, particularly the armor-heavy clashes of the 1991 Persian Gulf War which showcased all manner of modern technology to soundly defeat a quantitative foe. 602 Research Institute headed localized development of the new helicopter components utilizing complete 3D computer work. In 1979, the Chinese military studied the problem of countering large armor formations. It concluded that the best conventional solution was to use attack helicopters. Eight aerospatial gazelle armed with Euro missile hot were procured for evaluation. By the mid 1980s, the Chinese decided a dedicated attack helicopter was required. At the time, they used civilian helicopters converted for the military, these were no longer adequate in the attack role, and suitable only as scouts. Following this, China evaluated the Augusta A129 Mangusta, and in 1988 secured an agreement with the United States to purchase a H-1 Cobras and a license to produce BGM-71 tow missiles, the latter was cancelled following the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989 and the resulting arms embargo. The color revolutions prevented the purchase of attack helicopters from Eastern Europe in 1990 and 1991, Bulgaria and Russia rejected Chinese offers to purchase the Mil Mi-24. While attempting to import foreign designs failed, war games determined that attack helicopters had to be commanded by the Army, rather than the Air Force. This led to the formation of the People's Liberation Army Ground Force aircraft, with an initial strength of 9 Harbin Z9. The PLA Ground Force aircraft conducted tactical experiments that would help define the future Z10 requirements. Research also decided that anti-tank missiles like the BGM-71 TOW were inadequate, and favored an analog to the AGM-114 Hellfire. These findings ensured the Z-10 would be based around the new missile. The Gulf War highlighted the urgent need for attack helicopters, and revalidated the assessment that a purpose-built design was needed. At the time, the Chinese military depended on armed utility helicopters such as the Cheng Z-11 and Harbin Z-9. Also, it demonstrated that the new attack helicopter would need to be able to defend itself against other helicopters and aircraft. The military perceived that once the new attack helicopter entered service, the existing helicopters would be used as scouts. To program in 1994. A secret contract was signed with the Kamov Design Bureau of Russia to design and verify the helicopter airframe and propulsion. The program was promoted as a civilian project, and was able to secure significant Western technical assistance, such as from Eurocopter, Pratt & Whitney Canada and Augusta Westland. 
the Chinese concentrated on areas where it could not obtain foreign help. The end product became the Z10 with its two-man stepped cockpit arrangement similar to other modern types such as the Hughes AH-64 Apache of the American Army. The weapons officer sits in the frontal cockpit with the pilot in the rear with a commanding view of the battlefield ahead. Pilot controls are made redundant in case of incapacitation of one of the crew. Tracking and engagement systems are housed in a positional nose assembly as in the AH-64 and a chin-mounted turret houses the standard cannon armament. The fuselage is slim which promotes a very tight forward profile and fits a pair of turboshaft engines high in its configuration. The turboshaft engines power a five-bladed main rotor assembly fitted low on the fuselage top and a pair of two-bladed tail rotor units. The impenage is set low in the design with a conventional tail rotor offset to the starboard side. The tail rotor sits atop a tall vertical tail fin. At its base are a pair of horizontal stabilizers. Armament for the Z10 is fitted along two short wing stubs as in the AH-64 with two hard points each. The undercarriage is fixed and consists of two single wheeled main legs and a single wheeled tail leg. Avionics consists of a YH millimeter wave fire control radar and blue sky navigation targeting suite. Both pilots are afforded helmet mounted sight displays with integrated night vision optics. The Z10 can also combat electronics through its YH96 electronic warfare system. It can further degrade incoming tracking signals through its BMKG300 jamming pod. Performance for the Z10 is brought about by two WZ9 series turboshaft engines developing 1,350 shaft horsepower each, based on a Pratt & Whitney Canada civilian design found on other Chinese helicopters. Pratt & Whitney Canada is known to have supplied the Chinese with the available software to convert these civilian power plants into military-grade systems. This supplies the mount with a top speed of over 300 km per hour and a service range of over 800 km. A reported service ceiling of 6,400 m is listed. The vehicle stands at 3.85 m tall with a rotor diameter of 13 m and running length of 14 m. The WZ9 engines are completely assembled in China with no reliance on foreign assistance. The transmission was completed with assistance from the British-Italian concern of Agusta Westland. The US government went on to fine United Technologies Corporation, parent company to Pratt & Whitney Canada and Hamilton Sunstrand $75 million for their roles in assisting a foreign party while under the strict US export rules. Regardless, the damage has been done and the Chinese retain a viable turboshaft solution for their new attack helicopter. Their Z-10 is primarily fitted with a 23mm auto cannon in its turret which can be replaced by the optional 30mm fitting. Across the four available hard points can be fitted various air-launched munitions including the HJ-8 anti-tank wire-guided, HJ-9 anti-tank, HJ-10 anti-tank. TY-90 air-to-air, PL-5 short-range air-to-air, PL-7 air-to-air and PL-9 short-range air-to-air missiles. As with other attack helicopters of this class, the Z-10 is cleared to carry rocket pods and these arrive in 57mm or 90mm unguided forms. All told. The Z-10 is believed to be in the same attack class as the Eurocopter Tiger and Inle Ruvalk systems of Europe and South African respectively. It recorded its first flight on April 29, 2003 and entered service in December of 2010. Some 60 are believed to be in service or on order at this time.
for years. The Chinese denied foreign assistance on their Z-10 design though it was disclosed in March of 2013 that the government approached CAMA for its support in design in 1995. The program was then known under the designation of Project 941 during its development before the Chinese took the charge and ran with it to produce the finalized Z-10.